Hello guys welcome to Journey Through Audio, before watching this video please subscribe to this channel. Now let's get into the video. The Almanac of Naval Ravikant by Eric Jorgensen The Book Overview The Almanac of Naval Ravikant by Eric Jorgensen is a collection of Naval's wisdom and experience from the last 10 years. The book mainly highlights Naval's insights and reflections on how to build wealth, better judgment and a happy life. The three key takeaways. Play iterated games. All the returns in life, whether in wealth, relationships, or knowledge, come from compound interest. We accept the voice in our head as the source of all truth. But all of it is malleable, and every day is new. Memory and identity are burdens from the past preventing us from living freely in the present. Income equals accountability plus leverage plus specific knowledge. Building wealth. Making money is not a thing you do, it's a skill you learn. Seek wealth, not money or status. Wealth is having assets that earn while you sleep. Money is how we transfer time and wealth. Status is your place in the social hierarchy. Pick an industry where you can play long-term games with long-term people. Arm yourself with specific knowledge, accountability, and leverage. Specific knowledge is knowledge you cannot be trained for. If society can train you, it can train someone else and replace you. Specific knowledge is found by pursuing your genuine curiosity and passion rather than whatever is hot right now. Building specific knowledge will feel like play to you, but will look like work to others. Specific knowledge is often highly technical or creative. It cannot be outsourced or automated. Set and enforce an aspirational personal hourly rate. If fixing a problem will save less than your hourly rate, ignore it. If outsourcing a task will cost less than your hourly rate, outsource it. Escape competition through authenticity. Basically, when you're competing with people, it's because you're copying them. It's because you're trying to do the same thing. But every human is different. Don't copy. If you are fundamentally building and marketing something that is an extension of who you are, no one can compete with you on that. When you find the right thing to do, when you find the right people to work with, invest deeply. Sticking with it for decades is really how you make the big returns in your relationships and in your money. So, compound interest is very important. You have to work up to the point where you can own equity in a business. You could own equity as a small shareholder where you bought stock. You could also own it as an owner where you started the company. Ownership is really important. The less you want something, the less you're thinking about it, the less you're obsessing over it, the more you're going to do it in a natural way. The more you're going to do it for yourself. You're going to do it in a way you're good at, and you're going to stick with it. The people around you will see the quality of your work is higher. The mo most interesting and the most important form of leverage is the idea of products that have no marginal cost of replication. This is the new form of leverage. This was only invented in the last few hundred years. It started with the printing press. It accelerated with broadcast media, and now it's really blown up with the internet and with coding. Now, you can multiply your efforts without involving other humans and without needing money from other humans. For someone who is early in their career, and maybe even later, the single most important thing about a company is the alumni network you're going to build. Think about who you will work with and what those people are going on to do. If you are a trusted, reliable, high-integrity, long-term thinking dealmaker, when other people want to do deals, but don't know how to do them in a trustworthy manner with strangers, they will literally approach you and give you a cut of the deal just because of the integrity and reputation you've built up. Your character and your reputation are things you can build which will let you take advantage of opportunities other people may characterize as lucky, but you know it wasn't luck. Building judgment. If you want to make the maximum amount of money possible, if you want to get rich over your life in a deterministically predictable way, stay on the bleeding edge of trends and study technology, design, and art, become really good at something. The really smart thinkers are clear thinkers. They understand the basics at a very, very fundamental level. To see the truth, you have to get your ego out of the way because your ego doesn't want to face the truth. The smaller you can make your ego, the less conditioned you can make your reactions, the less desires you can have about the outcome you want, the easier it will be to see the reality. I try not to have too much of predecided. 
I think creating identities and labels locks you in and keeps you from seeing the truth. Almost all biases are time-saving heuristics. For important decisions, discard memory and identity and focus on the problem. Tell everyone. Start now. It doesn't have to be blunt. Charisma is the ability to project confidence and love at the same time. It's almost always possible to be honest and positive. During decision-making, the brain is a memory prediction machine. A lousy way to do memory prediction is X happened in the past, therefore X will happen in the future. It's too based on specific circumstances. What you want is principles. You want mental models. I don't believe I have the ability to say what is going to work. Rather, I try to eliminate what's not going to work. I think being successful is just about not making mistakes. It's not about having correct judgment. It's about avoiding incorrect judgments. If you have two choices to make, and they're relatively equal choices, take the path more difficult and more painful in the short term. What's actually going on is one of these paths requires short-term pain. And the other path leads to pain further out in the future. And what your brain is doing through conflict avoidance is trying to push off the short-term pain. Learning happiness. Don't take yourself so seriously. You're just a monkey with a plan. People mistakenly believe happiness is just about positive thoughts and positive actions. The more I've read, the more I've learned, and the more I've experienced, because I verify this for myself, every positive thought essentially holds within it a negative thought. It is a contrast to something negative. The Tao Te Ching says this more articulately than I ever could, but it's all duality and polarity. If I say I'm happy, that means I was sad at some point. If I say he's attractive, then somebody else is unattractive. Every positive thought even has a seed of a negative thought within it and vice versa, which is why a lot of greatness in life comes out of suffering. You have to view the negative before you can aspire to and appreciate the positive. Happiness to me is mainly not suffering, not desiring, not thinking too much about the future or the past, really embracing the present moment and the reality of what is and the way it is. Happiness is what's there when you remove the sense that something is missing in your life. We think of ourselves as fixed and the world is malleable, but it's really we who are malleable and the world is largely fixed. The fundamental delusion, there is something out there that will make me happy and fulfilled forever. Today, the way we think you get peace is by resolving all your external problems. But there are unlimited external problems. The only way to actually get peace on the inside is by giving up this idea of problems. The enemy of peace of mind is expectations drilled into you by society and other people. If you can't see yourself working with someone for life, don't work with them for a day. Death is the most important thing that is ever going to happen to you. When you look at your death and you acknowledge it, rather than running away from it, it'll bring great meaning to your life. We spend so much of our life trying to avoid death. So much of what we struggle for can be classified as a quest for immortality. Saving yourself. All of society does this to some extent. People chasing thrills in action sports or flow states or orgasms, any of these states people strive for are people trying to get out of their own heads. They're trying to get away from the voice in their heads, the overdeveloped sense of self. When we're older, we're a collection of thousands of habits constantly running subconsciously. We have a little bit of extra brain power in our neocortex for solving new problems. You become your habits. To have peace of mind, you have to have peace of body first. Impatience with actions, patience with results. Scott Adams famously said, set up systems, not goals. Use your judgment to figure out what kinds of environments you can thrive in, and then create an environment around you so you're statistically likely to succeed. If you hurt other people because they have expectations of you, that's their problem. If they have an agreement with you, it's your problem. But, if they have an expectation of you, that's completely their problem. It has nothing to do with you. They're going to have lots of expectations out of life. The sooner you can dash their expectations, the better. The modern struggle, lone individual summoning in human willpower, fasting, meditating, and exercising, up against armies of scientists and statisticians weaponizing abundant food, screens, and medicine into junk food, clickbait news, infinite porn, endless games, and addictive drugs. Philosophy 
there is actually nothing but this moment. No one has ever gone back in time, and no one has ever been able to successfully predict the future in any way that matters. Literally, the only thing that exists is this exact point where you are in space at the exact time you happen to be here. Inspiration is perishable, act on it immediately. Navel's writing. These are not definitions, these are algorithms for success. Happiness equals health plus wealth plus good relationships. Health equals exercise plus diet plus sleep. Exercise equals high-intensity resistance training plus sports plus rest. Diet equals natural foods plus intermittent fasting plus plants. Sleep equals no alarms plus 8 to 9 hours plus circadian rhythms. Wealth equals income plus wealth asterisk, return on investment. Income equals accountability plus leverage plus specific knowledge. Accountability equals personal branding plus personal platform plus taking risk. Leverage equals capital plus people plus intellectual property. Specific knowledge equals knowing how to do something society cannot yet easily train other people to do. Return on investment equals buy and hold plus valuation plus margin of safety. Thank you for watching. For more interesting videos, please subscribe to Journey Through Audio.